So I want you to be honest with me in the comments and in the chat box if you're on the live stream version of this. Do you know what the knee control does on your compressor? And if so, you have this theoretical knowledge of what it does. Like, do you really have a sense of how and why you'd use it? And like, why would that at all inform your compression decisions? I theoretically knew what knee was and what it did to audio ages ago. But did I really know? Did I really internalize it? I don't think so. And I think I have a much easier way to describe to you what the knee is really doing in your compressor, how to use it, and how to let it inform your choices even when you're using a compressor that doesn't have a knee control on it. Because even if your compressor doesn't have a knob on it that says knee, there is a knee in that compressor. And what that knee is like, to some degree, shapes the tone and response of the compressor. You'll see that as I turn this knee knob, the little curve on this compressor changes, and it changes right here where this orange line is. So this is why it's called knee. This almost looks like a a bend in a joint here. But not all of you really know how to read one of these gain reduction graphs. On one side, you've got input in. One side, you've got resulting output out. You'll see that as I change the ratio, the line would change as well. But here's how I want you to think about what the knee is doing. When you have a soft knee, it basically takes your threshold, that point where the compressor starts kicking in, and instead of making it a hard and fast line, it turns it into a blurry line, a fuzzy line. I'm going to bring up some analogies here. I'm going to try to think of some on the spot. And here's what I've got for you on what the knee is like. A hard knee would be like a nightclub bouncer who says you get into the nightclub or you don't. You, you're pretty, come in. You, you're ugly, you're not allowed in. And either that rope gets parted and you come into the nightclub and you're in the club or you're not. A really hard knee compressor basically says, you get past this threshold, you're getting in. You're not past this threshold, no nightclub for you. You're not even allowed to put your ear up against the door and listen to the throbbing bass coming out of the club. No, you start doing that, we're going to take you out to the pavement. Man, I'm probably taking this bouncer analogy too far. But I think you get the idea. Hard knee means that that threshold is really serious about being a threshold. This is a line you do not cross, and if you cross it, then you're getting compressed. You don't cross it, you're not getting compressed. Whereas a soft knee is a little bit more like making that threshold line blurrier, fuzzier, where as a signal starts to approach the threshold, it might start getting compressed before it even hits the nominal threshold. And then as it passes the threshold, it gets compressed a little bit more. And as it passes it further, it gets compressed potentially more still. And that's the way that a lot of softer knee compressors work. Basically, you pass the threshold, you're getting compressed a little bit. As you pass the threshold more, you're getting compressed more. It's almost like having a variable ratio. At least that's the way that I think is best to conceptualize and understand it. And it also has an effect on changing the way that your attack and release time feel. And I'll get into that in just a second and how you can use this to greater tonal effect. But to use one of these analogies again, the soft ratio would be a bit like the coach of like a youth soccer league where everyone gets a trophy or at least a ribbon. And it's like, maybe you were the best player on the team, so you get the biggest trophy. But come on, we're all going to get a little bit of a trophy. As long as you actually showed up and tried, you'll get a ribbon, you'll get something. Maybe you ran the fastest 100-meter dash, and you're going to get the biggest trophy because you got the furthest past the threshold. But those of you who got, you got pretty close to the threshold, you deserve a runner-up prize. And that's kind of what a softer knee is like. You get past the threshold, you're getting compressed. How much? Eh, a little bit. You get past it more, you're getting compressed more. And in some compressor designs, you could say, as you're approaching the threshold, we're starting to get compressed before we even hit that point that you might consider the threshold. It's like, eh, what's the threshold among friends? You came pretty close. You get a little bit of compression for you. The hard knee, it's like, nope, you didn't pass the threshold. No compression for you. So that's the general idea. And I hope that conceptualizes it better than just looking at this knee on this graph here. 
Now, what are the real world effects of that tonally? When it comes to your attack and release, they're going to be more precise when you have a hard knee, firm threshold. But as your knee gets softer and softer, they're going to be a little less precise. And it has the effect of basically slowing down both your attack and your release. So at the same nominal setting, say you set a 10 millisecond attack time and a 80 millisecond release time, in effect, those attack and release times will get a little bit slower as the knee softens. And the effective ratio will get a little bit softer, gentler. The ratio will get a little bit lower as that knee softens. And as your knee gets harder, your attack and release get faster and more precise, and your ratio becomes more precise and it becomes closer to what your actual nominal ratio is. Now, I don't do a lot of audio examples on the podcast. It's a podcast. I expect that half the people listening to this are like driving in their cars and you know doing the dishes, mowing their lawn or something. So generally speaking, a lot of your old school retro compressors are going to have softer knees. And a lot of your more modern compressors are going to have harder knees. VCA compressors, you can think of those as being harder knee compressors on average, things like your SSL compressors and your API compressors, whereas things like your opto compressors, your LA-2As, your Manly Varimuse, your Fairchild tube compressors, those things are generally going to be softer knee compressors. And an LA-2A opto compressor, a compressor like this might have a nominal attack time of something like 10 milliseconds. But that's a little bit dependent on the program material that's being fed into it. And it has a fixed attack time, old school compressor, but the effective attack time feels somewhat slower than it might otherwise be because of that softer knee. The same kind of thing happens with a tube compressor, like a Fairchild. They actually have relatively fast attack times. Nominally, they're in the range of a millisecond or two, depending on which setting you have them in. But because they have a softer knee, they tend to act a little bit slower because the signal that has just gotten past the threshold a little bit isn't getting compressed as much as signals that have gotten way further through the threshold. So is the effect of slowing down our attack and release and lowering our ratio. So you're generally going to associate the sound of optocompressors, tube compressors with softer knees, and you're generally going to associate the sound of VCA compressors, more modern compressors with harder knees. But a lot of modern compressors do give you the ability to change between these two modes. Is the change of changing your knee really significant? Not always, no. In fact, in the Compression Breakthroughs course, we do a lot of audio examples. You can hear a whole bunch of audio examples. And I didn't set up a whole bunch for today's podcast episode because as a podcast, we don't do a lot of audio examples. And because to set up audio examples where I know you can really hear the changes in knee actually takes some doing because it can be kind of subtle. And here's the reality with a lot of these advanced controls that we're going to get to today. A lot of them can be a little bit subtle, but every once in a while, it can be just the right thing. So here's the way I want you to think about how to set your knee and how to use your knee, and then we'll go on to some other controls. Man, if this was some other channel, we would just like end this right after talking about knee for 15 minutes. We've learned everything possible about knee, but we're going to learn about this much, about all of the other controls, although much faster as we go along after I do this, and I'll probably excerpt out a section on knee. Okay, I got all the theory just, and I understand better than ever how it works, but how am I going to apply that in my actual mixes and recordings? That's a great question, and I'm going to answer it in a second. Hey, if you like that clip, you might love the full-length video that it came from. Or you might want to check out one of my full-length courses like Mixing Breakthroughs, Compression Breakthroughs, or Mastering Demystified. They will change the way you work forever for the better, guaranteed, or your money back. Hope to see you on the other side.